Night Fights, presented by Miller High Life. And tonight, we're in Indio, California. A world title belt is on the line in the desert. Winky Wright, he's beaten Keith Mullings and Bronco McCart. Many thought he beat Fernando Vargas. He'll face Robert Frazier, a veteran pro, number two contender for the junior middleweight title. Friday Night Fights, IBF Junior Middleweight Championship at stake. Winky Wright is a seasoned pro out of St. Petersburg, Florida. 41 wins, 24 knockouts. He's been a USBA champion and ranked number one by the IBF. Winky Wright is a guy who gives a lot of people problems. Take Fernando Vargas, for example. December of 1999, Winky Wright was in Vargas's face, but he would lose a majority decision. He'd return to the ring and win a rematch against Bronco McCart, winning an easy 12-round decision and the USBA and NABF titles. Plus, he strung together a win against Keith Mullings. So tonight against Robert Frazier, Wright is a 10-to-1 favorite. Tonight, he'll get Robert Push-Up Frazier, the 27-year-old from Rochester, New York, ranked number two by the IBF. 23 wins as a pro with 13 knockouts. We've seen Robert Frazier before here on Friday Night Fights. Most notably, June of 2000, when he squared off against Pedro Ortega. He won an easy 10-round decision. He has two knockout victories since that point. Frazier explains why he will be the winner tonight. He knows it's going to be a war. Um, and I know it's going to be a war from, 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 from round one to whatever rounds it go to. I know he's in the best shape of his life, uh, but I just feel, you know, um, I, I, I really feel that, you know, my, my struggle is, 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 is up right now. Um, like I said, I, I'm in tremendous shape. I really, really worked hard at this fight. And like I said, I think I wanted a little bit more than, than Winky. Well, we'll find out if that determination is enough to win it. Now time for the strategy in Atlas's world. In tonight's battle for the belt, the physically stronger Winky Wright will try to outmuscle the elusive Robert Frazier. Wright has probably devised a battle plan that looks something like this. Work the body. Winky's the stronger guy and should try to make it an inside fight whenever he can. Banging the body and taking away the legs of Frazier. Jab, jab, jab. Frazier likes to move and then stop and pot shot. A good jab will keep him busy and he won't be able to pick his spot. And finally, time him coming in. Frazier will sometimes fall in on you and try to tie you up. Winky should time him. Step back and let his hands fly. For Robert Frazier to strap on the belt, his battle plan should highlight what he does best. Box. Wright is going to try to get inside. Frazier must use his jab and his legs to keep Wright off balance and away from his body. Draw and counter. Frazier can't afford to stand in with the stronger right. He should let Winky come to him, counter punch, and then get out. Hit and run. And as I explained earlier, Frazier must not fall in. He has a bad habit of doing this, especially late in the fight. If he tries this with the polished Winky right, he'll probably fall right into a punch. And then I could be saying, down goes Frazier. That is Atlas's world. We are set for tonight's main event here at the Fantasy Springs Casino. Winky Wright, Robert Frazier, vacant IBF, junior middleweight championship at stake. And there is Robert Push-Up Frazier, 27 years of age. You see his last five fights. We had the fight against Pedro Ortega. Losses against the likes of Carl Daniels and David Reed. He's had eight weeks to prepare for that man. Winky Wright, 41 wins, 24 knockouts. You see his last five fights. He had the loss to Fernando Vargas and Harry Simon. Simon fight was for the WBO title. He's beaten Bronco McCart twice. His wins against Tony Marshall, NABF champ, USBA champ. It's been 12 rounds, 10 times in his career. 0 and 2 in. WBC, IBF, and WBA championship fights. Well, Robert Frazier comes in as a heavy underdog in this fight. 
Some have it at 10 to 1, Teddy. But I think his heart and determination is going to make this fight closer than a lot of people expect. And I think Frazier could be right in the mix as this fight goes late. Throw one other thing in there with heart and determination. Style. Styles make fights. The referee is John Shirley. Maybe a little bit high. And hey guys, the unified the rules used title. for this world championship bout. No for knockdown no rule, no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop it. Fighter cannot be saved with the bell in any round. Accidental foul, they'll go to the scorecards after four. Count of four rounds are complete. So there is Winky Wright, born in Washington, D.C., fighting out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Ten month layoff. Says it wasn't by his own doing. He was waiting for Trinidad, waiting for some big fight. He said, but my awkward style, a lot of people don't want to fight me. But he's with manager James Prince and emotionally with top rank. He feels now things will start to happen. We'll find out. Of course, right a southpaw. Trying to come out and take charge right away. And for those out there that want a little help with a scouting report on how Frazier has done the southpaws, well, he's fought two top level ones. And in those two fights, he's had a draw, and he's been knocked out. Knockout loss to Carl Daniels, the draw, Andrew Murray. In the knockout loss to Daniels, wasn't so much him getting flattened and knocked out. Frazier had a cut left eyelid, could not see the fight to stop TKO, although Daniels was winning the fight. Styles. We talk about it. We just did talk about it. Styles. That's what this fight may come down to. The speed and the elusiveness of Frazier to use his legs. Hot shot, get out, hit and run, pop, 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 and move. And Winky Wright walking forward and going to the body, taking those legs away from Frazier. Wright feels he has the recipe to deal with that, and that's his jab. He says, my jab is better than his jab and I'll be able to control Frazier's movement with that jab. That remains to be seen. If you think that experience and being in there with top, top notch fighters, and being a southpaw, and being the stronger man is the better asset, then you will like with your right. You like quickness. Fast hands, no power, but quick hands and strategy, punching and getting out. But then you like Frazier's chances. Well, that's a knockdown. Frazier was off balance, but he got hit with a punch. Six, and that helped send him down. Seven, Robert stay there. Frazier. Eight. The stronger man, as we've been saying, no doubt about it. The Southport, Winky Wright. It's that back left hand. The southpaw position, catching Frazier stepping out. And also, I think their feet might have gotten tangled a little bit. Remember, we have a lefty against a righty. The feet can get tied up. And Wright delivered that punch. Frazier was going back. Maybe they got tied up. Wright's got the knockdown in the books. And look for more feet getting tangled up, partner. You mentioned it. You're right. A lefty and a righty. Orthodox fighter Frazier with his left foot forward. The, the southpaw, right with his right foot forward. They can touch each other. Wasn't a huge punch, but Winky Wright scores a knockdown against Robert Frazier in round one. I don't like fighters leaning forward, trying to draw punches like Frazier does here. Because you draw the punch, but you don't get away from it. That left hand landed. Good knockdown call. able to see from the angle, but the legs were near each other too, and you just wonder if it's possible. The legs got tangled up. Take a look at the punch numbers in round one. Winky Wright landed 10 of 42 jabs in that first round. So stat will keep our eye on. Frazier landed just one of 36 jabs. Sometimes when a fighter is an overwhelming favorite, as you've mentioned, Winky Wright is, a knockdown that he scores early in the fight can actually hurt him. 
because then he says, okay, yeah, I am the favorite. That's right, it's going to be an easy night. And sometimes you can look for that one shot thinking it's going to be available all night long for the other fighter to get into gear and fight his style. But right now, looks like right, the stronger man, is landing the more effective punches. Good crisp left hand there from Winky Wright. Let's see. Problem with his glove. I'm in. Grease on the glove. And they bring the time back in. I was just going to say before Frazier got rocked there with that left hand, as you mentioned, maybe Wright would be a little overconfident that Wright had to know that Frazier was more off balance than anything else. He had to know it was sort of a lucky knockdown that he didn't really hurt him. And he landed that good left hand and he hurt him. Yes, he did. And I would think, Teddy, that's the spot where Frazier has to make right peg. When Wright is reaching and out of position, and Frazier didn't do it there. That's where you have to keep your hands and score with those quick counters. You know you're not going to outstrength the man. You have to out opportunity him. And the opportunities have to come from afar. They have to come from a distance. Inside, you're giving the stronger man the place and the position he needs to use that strength. See, this is where Frazier can be effective. Those quick tat, tat, tat punches, but then he must get out before the returns come. And Wright blocked most of that exchange. <laughs> the extra pressure on Robert Frazier, besides the pressure of trying to win a world title after being a pro for six years and eight months, is that he cannot make mistakes. He has to fight almost a perfect fight. Well, I believe Wright can make some mistakes and still win the fight. He's physically better. Frazier down in the first round with a flash knockdown. Got rocked in the second round with a good left hand from Winky Wright. Nice car. Not so nice scratch. Wouldn't it be nice if removing ugly scratches from your car Round three underway, Robert Frazier, Winky Wright, the vacant IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. Winky Wright in the dark trunks, Robert Frazier in the white. Frazier went down in the first round, flash knockdown. And uh, here's an interesting stat for you, Tim. Through the first two rounds of this fight, Winky Wright has landed 18 of 74 jabs. And Robert Frazier has landed one of 85 jabs so far in the fight. And when you're not the stronger man, and you're being out jabbed, well, you don't need me to tell you that things are looking a little bleak. If you're the boxer, and you're not using that jab, or not able to be effective with that jab, well, you're not boxing. The phrase you must box to be effective in this fight. Mickey Wright has not appeared on this network since May of 1996. They went to Monroe, Michigan, Bronco McCart's hometown, and he won a 12-round split decision against Bronco McCart. First of two meetings between those two. Right now, Winky Wright just controlling the action so far here in this fight so far. Hey, what does Frazier have to do to mix it up? Because if it just continues at this pace, he's going to get swamped in a 12-round decision. He has to find ways to create an offense. And right now, he's getting a little urchin there, reaching in. And that's a way to get caught for the counterpunch because Wright can do both. He can press as he's been doing very effectively so far. He can also switch to that counterpunching style. Frazier has to be able to get his punches off and then get out. And not get straight out. Get angles on right. Keep right off balance. Teddy, it's something you talk about a lot. Um, guys need to have that seamless transition from offense to defense. And right now, it seems that Frazier is very predictable. He's on defense. Wait, wait, wait. Move to offense. Wait, wait, wait. Back to defense. That's a very good point. He is not mixing or combining the two. 
when you don't mix or combine the two with an experienced seasoned fighter like Wright, well, it's gonna be losing, which is exactly what's happened. Wakey Wright, very patient so far in the fight. He's got the knockdown in his back pocket. He's controlling this fight through the first three rounds at stake, the vacant IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. And there's the bell to end round number three. So far, all Wakey Wright. Well, joining us here at ringside is Sugar Shane Mosley on many's pound for pound number one in the world and the champion. You're on a little... <laughs> You're on a little scouting mission here, aren't you? Yeah, I'm coming down here to check out the uh, the fight. And, uh, you know, Wicked Wright's doing an uh, excellent job. He's doing his jab very well and set up the combinations and the counter punch very well. So I'm coming to watch him because uh, possibly we'll be able to, to fight in the near future. All right, Danny. What is the near future for you? Uh, right now I'm looking at my chops for uh, a fight with Wicked Wright uh, for the junior middleweight title. And I've been hearing, hearing rumors that if you do get that chance and get that opportunity and you do win the title, which yes. most people would think you would. Yes. How about you and Bernard Hopkins? Is that true to that? That's what I've been hearing. Uh, well, I would like to do the, the junior middleweight tournament first and then possibly have uh, Bernard Hopkins come down to 155 because I don't think I can make uh, 160. I'm not, not big enough for that. Has there been discussion about it? Uh, I heard talk about it, but, you know, if, if it happens, you'll have to drop uh, the, the extra weight so I can uh, be able to fight him. Hey, you're not only smart in the ring, you're smart outside the ring. Always thinking, always <laughs> is it, thinking. Is it sort of a race to Hopkins? You know, there's been talk about De La Hoya. I mean, are we in a little foot race here to see who can grab him first? Well, no, I mean, you know, Bernard Hopkins is a great fighter, and he fought, fought a spectacular fight with uh, Sito Trinidad, and uh, I don't think anybody's going to be rushing to fight Bernard Hopkins. Except somebody who has tremendous confidence and thinks of himself as one of the best, if not the best fighter in the world. That's right. That's me. <laughs> what do you That's think the of this? Way it should be. What do you think of this so far? I mean, you mentioned Wright's doing what he has to do. If you were in Frazier's camp, what would you tell him to do? Well, Reg Robert Frazier came out, you know, bobbing with his head a lot, but uh, it seemed like he stopped. I think he was a little uh, intimidated with uh, Winky Wright's speed, and um, he just can't figure him out. He, don't, he doesn't really know what to do with Winky, and, and Winky's a seasoned veteran, and he's just picking him apart. You know what, it, to me, Shane, that Winky is really doing that, carrying this fight for him so far, that jab. He's not allowing Frazier the opportunity to stop and pot shot, which is what Frazier's game is. Look at the copy box numbers through three rounds. Frazier has landed one of 134 jabs. Wow. You can't win that way, can you? I know, but you know, if you notice, Winky Wright keeps his hands up very high uh, by his face, so it's hard for you to, to for you to get a clean shot off of him. I think that's discouraging uh, Robert Frazier from throwing punches. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. Wright has always been a cutie, a solid guy defensively. Hey, isn't that where it all starts? Everyone loves to talk about your hand speed, your power, your overall offensive ability, but defense. You have to have great defense. If you look at my stats, I don't get hit very much. No, you don't. <laughs> now, as you sit here and watch this fight, knowing that Winky Wright is a live wire for you as far as an opponent, maybe the next opponent, do you see some holes in his game right now that you're thinking how you'll exploit it? Well, I mean, I see some holes, but you, know, you have to be in the ring with him to actually see if it's really holes or if he's just uh, luring you into a, a counter punch. He can do it both. He's, he's a very great, uh, very good counter puncher and he's very quick and he's a seasoned fighter, a seasoned southpaw. So, um, you know, it'll be a difficult fight, but, you know, I'm willing to take that chance to move up to 154 and uh, win the title. You have to love where you are. You know, you think of Roy Jones, no real viable opponents. You got. Vargas, you've got De La Hoya, Winky Wright, there's talk of Hopkins. It's got to be great right now. Uh, it's real great. I mean, I think this is great for boxing. I mean, there's so many great fights out there, and, uh, you know, I'm just glad to be a part of it. Sugar Shane, thank you very much. Thank you. All Winky Wright Shane, thank to you. this point. Thank you. Not for what you do in the ring, but outside it, too. Welcome you to the desert. Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas, glad you could join us. Winky Wright, Robert Frazier battling for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. It's a vacant title. Frazier, flash knockdown in round number one. He hit the canvas. And Teddy, we've talked about the jabs all night long. Look at these jab numbers according to CompuBox. Frazier, three of 136. Wright, 38 of 186. And a southpaw jab to top it off. Not just a jab, but coming from the wrong side. That is where 
you can stop looking. That's that, right there, the jab. Because Frazier came in here with a fight plan. He knows that he doesn't have the pop, the power, the strength to hang in there with the stronger right. But he knew he had quick hands. He had a style where he could get off, get out. But one way you can stop a guy from pot shot you, and Frazier gets away with a little pot shot there, is to use your jab. And that jab of Winky Wrights has negated the ability for Frazier to stop and pot shot. Well, that is exactly what Winky Wright told us yesterday when we spoke. He said, my jab is better than his. Just watch when they get on the outside where Frazier needs to be. He can't do his pot shotting thing. And now he's being forced to fight the fight of Wright inside. Look for Wright to start to bang that body, which he's been doing the last couple rounds. And the more Frazier stays inside and gets forced to fight Wright's fight by staying inside, the more he's going to accumulate damage to that body, and his legs will be taken away in the later rounds. Wright feels he hurt Frazier. Frazier tried to counter off it, and he got tagged. That's how Wright creates more. Does not get smothered on the inside. Every time Wright gets close to Frazier, Frazier either falls in or leans forward. Wright blocking most of that. Right, the one landing the meaningful punches. Again, look, that jab, that southpaw jab of right doesn't allow Frazier to stop, get off, and then move. Good short left hand in there by Ricky Wright, measuring Frazier again. Ricky Wright, totally controlling Robert Frazier, came in as a heavy favorite. Right now, he is playing to that strength. Crisper, cleaner, sharper is Winky Wright. In the pre-fight setup, we talked about Frazier leaning forward, and it would give opportunities for Wright to step back and walk him into punches. That left uppercut was a good example of that. Round six underway with Winky Wright. And Robert Frazier competing for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship, the vacant title. Teddy, the way this fight is going, even the most loyal Robert Frazier fans have to feel that he has lost every round so far in this fight. I would think so. At some point, is he going to have to make a decision? Are they going to have to make a decision that, you know what, we're going to have to run the risk of getting knocked out because we have to go for a knockout. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, oh, well, you know, we could take a loss in alibis. This is for the world championship. The most important thing to him, inside him, is to win, to try to win. Not at some point to make a deal with himself to go the distance for the title, but to try to actually win the title. Then you will probably see that, and you will probably see right at that point score a knockout. Right hook to the body from Winky Wright. Is Frazier going to be able to make a decision to survive at some point? Which he's doing a little bit right now this round. Or run the risk, as you just talked about, of trying to win, which will feed more into the strength of Wright. Every time Wright starts to close the gap, get close to Frazier. Frazier has a habit of either falling in or leaning in. That can open up a lot of opportunities for Winky Wright's uppercut. To add to the woes of Wright being behind in this kind of fight, he does not have power. No, eight first round knockouts early in his career for the most part. 13 overall. And early in his career, you said it, that's the key. That's when you fight softer opposition. And that's when, even if you're not a banger, you can accumulate some knockouts on that record. And the same can be said for Wright. He has 24 knockouts. 
23 of them have come within the first six rounds, 10 first round knockouts. I think the biggest enemy, the biggest possible problem right now for Wright is keeping his focus, his concentrating, his concentration. Not taking for granted this fight to the back. Well, through the midway point, you and I think Wright has it comfortably. Round card girls wearing it well as we begin round number seven. Again, that jab controls and dictates distance. Whenever Frazier wants to be able to pick his spots, beat right to the punch at a distance, Wright's jab stops that. Check out these numbers, folks. Winky Wright in total control, Frazier posture. Wright has landed 61 drafts to Frazier's four. Surprised Wright continued to go to the head of Frazier, being the seasoned man he is, but he did not switch to the body. Hey, what do you make of Frazier? Yeah, this is a little out of character for him. This is uh, Manuel Burton stuff. Looking to hang his hat on something. Looking to get some confidence, some kind of good feeling. He hasn't had much to feel good about it so far this night. He's going to be a confidence killer when you eat a straight left hand. Only going to be a matter of time before the right starts going with that body instead of the hand. Frazier making a miss. Again, I'm very surprised there. Right goes to the body with the left hand. Is Frazier trying to frustrate Wright with all that stuff? He's trying to get done anything positive that he can. And that was the most positive he's been able, he has been able to do so far this fight. He's to make the other guy miss a couple of shots. That's right. Again, every time Wright starts to close the gap a little bit, watch how Frazier will sometimes lean forward a little bit. When he does that, Wright can move him into a punch, probably an uppercut. Well, we watch Frazier flash his defense. But in between all of that, Wright has landed some punches. See if Frazier does it again. There's the right spot for right. The head will move, but the body is staring you right in the face. It's not moving. Winky right keeping his composure. Some of Frazier's antics. Frazier playing a lot of defense in the seventh round, but I don't think it's changed much. Well, the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship at stake tonight. Teddy, I know Brian and Max talked about Tyson and his upcoming fight. You wanted to weigh in on that, literally. <laughs> yeah, uh, weigh in. 239 pounds. I mean, Please, I know I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but when you say you're in the best shape of your life and you come in 16 pounds heavier than you've ever been in your life, you're not in shape. I mean, Jesus. I, I mean, how long can you make comments like that? But I really believe after having watched tape of Niels and if Tyson doesn't knock him out in one round, he should grab the microphone from the referee over there and say, I retire. That is how bad Nielsen is. Nielsen is a guy who has no technique, no talent, drops his right hand, pulls straight back, slow with his left hand, very soft in the belly. If Tyson wants to fight, wants to fight, he scores a one round so knockout. Think Brigitte Nielsen has a chance. Better chance than, uh, because, you know, she could steal a little time there, you know. <laughs> you know, she could distract Tyson a little bit and keep Tyson from wanting to hit her. Yeah. Maybe. You know, the amazing thing is about that, there's, there's so many coming in contact with a lot of athletes and so on and so forth. And it's just amazing how uh, there's so many guys, uh, pro football players, basketball players, who actually think that Mike Tyson is a viable heavyweight and that he can beat the 
top guys. Which... Well, he still has a chance to do that because he can still punch, and there's nobody that stands out. There was no Godzilla. There was no monster there. And there's a morbid curiosity about Tyson. Will he do something crazy? Yeah, that's true. Well, right now, Winky Wright is dominating Robert Frazier. Did you ever watch the Jetsons when you were a little kid? Yes, yes. Uh, you remember how things used to just pop up? Guess what's going to just pop up right now? <laughs> Your buddy Max. Teddy's worst nightmare. Max. Teddy knows your worst nightmare. I just wanted to say something about what, you, what everyone's watching here with uh, Winky Wright. This is, if not an elite fighter, then one half level below the elite in the world. Not only because of wins like two wins against Bronco McCart and Keith Mullings, a win there, and Tony Marshall, Anthony Ivory, and guys like that. But here's a guy who in three career losses, one to Julio Cesar Vasquez years ago when he was a younger guy, he did pretty well in that fight. And then two recently, both disputed decisions, one to Harry Simon, top fighter, and one to Fernando Vargas. I mean, you're looking at a guy on that elite level in boxing. I think people should be aware. And the third one will be the charm. As Max just said, Wright has had three or two opportunities for legitimate world titles, lost in them, and now this third one, well, good things come in threes. You know, you almost can't even count the Vasquez fight. That was back in 94. It was a while ago. This is much more polished, better Winky Wright at this point. And you know, he's just, what he's done with his jab, as we've illustrated through the numbers of CompuBox, limiting Frazier to five jabs landed in the entire fight, and consistently landing his jab, 68 of them. Winky Wright did not have an Olympic background where he came out with medals to build with a promoter. He didn't have a big PR team he had to go he was so good he had to go over to France early in his career to build up his record to fight because of what Max just alluded to people did not want to fight a southpaw who was solid in every area well I, when I talked to him yesterday he said the Vargas performance killed my marketability no one wanted to fight me after that unfortunately for Robert Frazier he has to fight him and he's on the short end of the stick through eight. Now oh, the corner of Winky Wright doing a little psychological game with him. And you say, why? He's won every round. He scored a knockdown in the first round. Don't let up. Put on a good show. Don't lose your focus. Winky Wright told us he had the better jab yesterday than Robert Frazier. Take a look at these numbers compiled by CompuBox. 77 of 353. Not the greatest percentage. Frazier, 7 of 226. There's your fight right there. Well, you mentioned the corner. Psychologically, trying to make sure they keep right up. I alluded to that several rounds ago because that is the only danger right now that Wright is facing is that he becomes complacent, that he's having such a walk in the park that he lets up a little bit and allows Frazier, who still has plenty of heart, quick hands, to maybe hustle in spots. But right now, Frazier in the territory of Winky Wright, the stronger man, inside. Frazier's not going to win that battle. The problem is he's not winning the battle on the outside where he needs to. So he's being forced into areas that he doesn't belong. That's what a good fighter like Wright will do. He'll take it all away from him. They take the outside, the inside, leave you very, very little choice. And that's exactly the predicament that Frazier is in right now. I've talked about the strength difference right from the beginning. Right being the stronger man. Frazier, the smaller man, turned pro as a welterweight for his two years of his career. And he moved up to junior middleweight. Right. Well, he's been a junior middleweight his whole career. 11 years worth of a career. And Wright has waited a long, long time to get a belt, a world title belt put around his waist. Well, Frazier just as hungry, but I think he's just outskilled, plain and simple. 
You talked about working on sitting down on his punches, adding more power to his repertoire, but at this point in his career, it's a tough thing to change. There is Gary Sheffield of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's made the two-hour drive here to Indio, California, the Fantasy Springs Casino to check out. ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights, Winky Wright, Robert Frazier, IBF Junior Middleweight Championship at stake. All right, dropped Frazier in the first round, and a good power shot in the second round that stunned Frazier. He has just outgunned him, outclassed him through the first nine rounds of this fight. And again, it cannot be said enough. It's been done very quietly, but very effectively. Winky Wright, Southpaw Jam has taken away it's the only chance Robert Frazier had, which was to stop and pot shot. That jab has made it impossible for Frazier to pick those hit and run spots. Every time he wants to stop and pot shot, that jab is keeping him busy. Frazier's only landed nine jabs through nine rounds, according to CompuBox. See, when the jab doesn't come from right, which is not that often, Frazier has an opportunity to do what he needs to do more of. Let's go to the corner of Robert Frazier. Robert Johnson joins us. Robert Bob Papa Teddy Atlas. Uh, Wright's winning the jab game. We know Robert's style. We've seen him before. I mean, at what point do you just say, go for the knockout or be knocked out? The IBF title's at stake. He's about ready for that time right now. I think he can outbox him. He just, like you said, drink his jab. Is it's popping too much. But he got to not start doing it being first, and he's not being first. When he's first, he stops winking just like that. Winking comes up. Robert, you're being very honest. Has it come to the time now that you're just going to... I mean, we know the fight strategy was to hit and move, keep right off balance, right's a little bit stronger. But has it come to the point now where you got to throw that out the window and you just got to go out there and maybe do things you didn't want him to do? Well, he's got to fight. Yeah. Robert, thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you. Robert Johnson in the corner of Robert Frazier. You just wonder if it's in the temperament of Robert Frazier to do what you and his trainer and I say. But right now, it's about choices. And you touched on it early in the fight when this pattern was just starting to develop. When he comes to the point, and there's nothing else to do except slow portion to the win and try, even at the risk of getting knocked out to win the fight. Will he do that, or will he go the distance? Uh, the, one, the one thing I would always give a fighter is, what you're telling him is, you have to maybe go get knocked out. It's not like going into a basketball game and say, just start chucking up threes. Welcome back to Friday Night Fights, presented by Miller High Life. Pop Pop and Teddy Atlas, Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio, California. Winky Wright dominating. Robert Frazier at stake. The vacant IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. We heard from Sugar Shane Mosley earlier. Winky Wright could be squaring off against Sugar Shane in his main next fight. We'll take a look at the punch numbers through 10 rounds. 173 landed by Wright, 64 by Frazier. Frazier has landed about 11 jabs in the whole fight. Nine, actually, Joe Conticelli corrects me. Wright is a fighter who is quietly good. He's not scintillating in one area, one department. You can't say, wow, like you can with Mosley. That tremendous hand speed. Or wow, like you do with Tyson, that tremendous power. But he's very, very good in every category, in every department. And that's why throughout his career, a lot of guys do not want to fight him. 
I'm already thinking about Mosley right. I'm trying to think of how that fight will play out. I, I just think Mosley will be too fast for him. I know Wright's solid, but Mosley, as excellent a talent as Wright is, Mosley is that superstar. He has shown himself to be just that so far. And you can be sure that Wright will quit himself with whoever he's in there with, like a real pro. He will make adjustments. And he will be solid and consistent and reliable all the way through the fight. He will not be intimidated by talent. He might be beaten by talent, but he will not be intimidated by talent. Frazier just laying the hands out there, but he just does not have the power, even when he's in range and even when he hits right, to hurt him at all. And again, it's a tough thing to say during a world title fight, but I believe Wright has become a little bored. Taking nothing away from the heart and Moxie and Frazier. On the flip side of that, Winky Wright doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. All he has to do is win the fight and win the belt. It's not like he's got to impress anybody. Go in there and now finish it, finish the show like we talked about with Antonio Diaz earlier. His people wanted to finish the show because he was against a much lesser opponent. That's a good point. After 11 years in the pros and two former title shots, he just has to win the belt. The top five reasons you can't blame Jose Cansig over the stick. Welcome back to Indio, California. Winky Wright, at least by our estimation. I, could, I believe that if you pulled the Robert Frazier family, you couldn't even get their estimation that Winky Wright hasn't all right, won son, all 11 rounds to this point. Well, this one would seem to be pretty safe, and that's hard to say in the strange world of boxing. But I think you can say fairly safely that Wright has this one in the bag. Jabs through 11 rounds. Wright, 91 of 435. Frazier, 14 of 330. And of those 14, five came in the last round. So more than, a little more than a third of his jabs landed came in round 11 for Frazier. And right now, after being the boards, after dictating control all the way through, Wright is boxing up on his toes, showing. At 29 years of age, after 11 years in the pro, he has plenty left in the 12th round. And he is enjoying the last moment before he gets that belt from him. Right there blocking everything to the right punch in Fraser. Again, you're right. All that matters is that Wright wins this fight. But I will still say what I said earlier. I believe that Wright has become a little bored. That's a good left cross there to Wright. Frazier holds on. I think several rounds ago, Wright dominated the fight so handily that it was difficult for him to keep a little bit of a touch of urgency, that little bit of... being ready to concentrate every second. I think he's let up just a little bit. But not enough to fall asleep with the switch. Just lost that little bit of an edge. Probably all it means is that Frazier might win one of the 12 rounds. Twenty-nine-year-old Winky Wright. Many thought he beat Fernando Vargas in December of 1999 for the IBF crown. A couple good wins against Bronco McCart. He's challenged for a world championship twice. And the St. Petersburg, Florida resident is 17 seconds away from being the IBF junior middleweight champion of the world in a masterful performance against Robert Frazier. 
Those are one of his best punches in the fight. That got Wright's attention. But it's all for the stats at this point. There's the bell. Winky Wright, Robert Frazier get through 12. Dominant performance by Winky Wright. He dropped Frazier in the first round and just controlled the action from start to finish. Winky Wright, Robert Frazier done with their 12 round bout. Let's take a look at the total punch numbers. You see that Wright outlanded Frazier, 108 to 83. Key number right here, jabs. Wright at 22%, Frazier 15 of 359, 4%. Teddy Atlas's scorecard reads as follows, 119 to 109 with the last round even. I have it 119 to 108, all for Winky Wright. Official judges cards now, here's Lupe Contreras. Gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Judges Pat Russell and Jose Cobian score the bout identically, 119 to 108. And judge Dr. Lou Moritz scores about 120 to 107. Your winner by unanimous decision and new IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, Winky Wright. No doubt about it. No, sir. And after two tries, the third one becomes the charm. Winky Wright is a world champion. Winky Wright has that long-awaited world championship belt around his waist. You're fighting for a world championship. Either get knocked out or knock out and try to go for the win. Yeah, I thought maybe that, you know, after a while he knew that he wasn't going to win the way he was fighting, that he would try to fight me more. But he was satisfied with just moving around, taking the punches and trying to survive. Well, all right, we talked to Shane Mosley. He says he'd like to fight you. Obviously, you have that controversial fight with Fernando Vargas. I mean, do you look to get the belts together first? Hey, I want to get the belts. I want to fight Shane. He's a great fighter. I want to fight all the tough fighters. I fought all the rest. Now it's time to fight the best. I went overseas to get to where I'm at right now. So whoever want to step up and fight Winky Wright, sign it, with, sign it on the dotted line, and I'll fight any of them. That's Winky Wright.